Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Right now in FIFA 23, there is a lot of criticism that has been pointed at EA Sports for the recent levels and quality of content in FIFA 23. While I do want to talk about that in today's video, I want to bring something else to your attention that I think is even a bigger issue, and it has to do with consistency. Not with the content, but with some upgrades, right? We had Path to Glory upgrades a few hours ago, and they upgraded some cards, but they forgot about some cards as well. I want to talk about the consistency with that, and with price range updates in my opinion those are big big issues that EA have been overlooking in the past couple of weeks and it's creating issues on the market and in this game and it's making the game less fun for people because of those inconsistencies so I want to talk about that the World's Cup stories cards that were released yesterday I mean guys I know people are complaining about these cards but let's just take it as a, at a face value there are some nice cards that EA put out some cool cards Decent weak foot upgrades, decent skill move upgrades. So I want to take a look at those. Um, the World Cup icons are a bit underwhelming. And I also want to take a look at the market because with the content yesterday being received is a bit underwhelming. Some prices went back up a little bit. And the World Cup stories cards right now do seem to be pretty expensive. And I think that's because there's a lack of supply because there's not that much hype for people to open, open packs for these cards that are in packs for now. So we're going to talk about all that and more headed into a Saturday, the first day of knockout games in the World Cup. Should be a good one. But if you're excited for today's video, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. Let's kind of talk about this. What's going on right now with the upgrades and everything uh, that EA have kind of been messing up in the past few weeks. Now, we did have Path to Glory updates a few hours ago, right? We have seen some upgrades to these cards. It wasn't all nice and put together in one big drop that was timely from EA, though, because these cards are just kind of randomly upgraded. Last time they upgraded cards, which was earlier in this week, I think it was like Monday night or Tuesday night, they upgraded these cards. They tweeted out about it. They said, hey, all Path to Glory and Once to Watch upgrades are now live in game. It was spot on at midnight. And last night when EA did this, or a few hours ago whenever you're watching this video, it wasn't really that timely. They kind of got it all done, uh, but it didn't seem like it dropped all right away at midnight. It seemed like it was a little bit delayed, and they forgot to upgrade the Ones to Watch cards. So you got, for you guys that were looking for a Ones to Watch uh, Rudiger upgrade, Ones to Watch Serginho Dest was one of the most hyped up cards to get an upgrade because he's getting a plus three for the Milan links, for the USA links, this is a card that a lot of people were very excited to see upgraded. He is still sitting here as an 81 rated card. And that's where I want to bring up the question and just the, the fact that EA have been very inconsistent recently with these upgrades and upgrades in general all year long. You think about the road to the knockout card upgrades, ones to watch upgrades that happens usually on Wednesdays after a card gets in team of the week. At the beginning of the year, it would happen like boom, 15 minutes after the card got a team of the week it was upgraded, right? But now it's like hours afterwards and the sometimes days now with these wins to watch upgrades that we had um, a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago now, it was just very inconsistent with these and we have it here once again with these ones to watches not getting upgraded when they should have been, right? I don't think it's a time issue either because Germany played two days ago. They were not upgraded. This Rudiger card is still in 88. Uh, Schlotterbeck is still in 88. You know, I can understand that like literally Uruguay played yesterday but EA had not loaded an upgrade for the Darwin Nunez card e either, even though he technically deserves one because Uruguay won the game. So he does get an upgrade. That's the issue that I have with these cards right now and with EA right now is the upgrades being inconsistent. Now, EA have even told us on their website, they have listed, and this is nice. EA has like never done this before, but they listed out an upgrade kind of like calendar. They said, hey, we're going to get upgrades out uh, starting December 3rd, actually November 28th, right? And then December 3rd, 7th, 12th, 15th, and the 19th. But uh, this is for the Path to Glory cards, and we assumed that they were going to upgrade the ones to watch it at the same time but they ended up not doing that. So that's the biggest issue that I have with them right now. The other issue I have are on cards like this Mateus Nunez, who is probably one of the most hyped lower level new cards in the Premier League as a midfielder. 45,000 coins we have to pay for this guy right now because his minimum price range is keeping him there. There are so many examples. I don't think I've seen this like ever as much as I have in the past month on this game. So many cards are literally at their minimum price and they can't be listed any lower because EA has these price ranges set up too high. They've made the market so cheap this year with so much supply and just keeping prices down so much that these cards have too high of price ranges even for this market that we were in this year, which is actually kind of nuts. And like I said, I've never seen so many cards that haven't been able to sell on the market 
Uh, I mean, we're looking through so many of these PTG cards here that still have crazy high price ranges too. It's like Lukaku, 750,000 coins. Like EA, you're literally shooting yourselves in the foot here because people are going to start transferring coins with these cards because their price ranges are so broad. So price range issue has been a problem for a long time uh, in the past couple of weeks. Early on in the year, price range got updated pretty fast, right? Maybe a couple days would go by, and sometimes with new promo cards, it was only a couple hours before they would upgrade price ranges. Now it seems to be something is lagging behind with their system, right? We do actually know that computers, like system at EA upgrades price ranges. It's not a manual thing uh, as far as we know. So the fact that this has been lagging behind is very, very annoying. And that's a big problem, right? I mean, I know some of you guys still have Lukaku's and still have Serge Nabry's and Carrasco's um, that maybe you had in your team. Uh, whether it's for your team or for an investment, the fact that you can't even like, like sell these guys on the market because they're at their minimum price. Suarez, for example, 80,000 coins. Let's say you pack this guy. You can't sell him. You can't get your 80K. Or maybe you can't even get your 40K that this card would maybe be worth. Um, you know, because he doesn't even sell on the market. So that's the biggest issue that I have right now with this game. I'll be honest, the content in this game, it hasn't been insane, right? And that's been the biggest uh, kind of complaint from people right now. The content has not been insane, but I think the content's still been good. And we have to keep it in a perspective. We, as a community, keep asking for better and better content all of the time. And EA keeps raising the bar and raising the standard every single year. I mean... If you take a look at this content that we had right now and you go back to like three years ago in FIFA, we would be like, oh my gosh, this content is unbelievable, You're right? Kind of puts that in perspective a little bit. You just have to remember that content in FIFA all the time cannot be like absolutely insane, knock your socks off, like change your team every single day on this game because that's not what EA want to do, right? EA wants to make the content go up and down because they literally just can't keep the content going 100% full bore, super duper insane all the time because even that would get boring. And then they can't really go too much higher from there, if you know what I'm saying, right? It's all about kind of just making the hype play in their favor, right? They know how to run this game. It's their company. They make a lot of money off of it. So that's why I think the content has been decent lately. It's been good, but it hasn't been insane right and you just have, we just kind of have to know and, and look at it through that lens and realize that hey ea are still dropping some pretty good cards even if the cards that drop every week are not live cards or the cards that like you know insert into your team automatically maybe one card every week is like something that's interesting for your team or that you want to try out that's sweet right so i mean you know, i think that these world cup stories cards are actually pretty nice cards right i really do believe that ea did some really nice upgrades here i like this the skill move the weak foot upgrades that we have on these i mean shoot we have a danny alves right we have a, a kiar with 80 pace um yeah we have an extinct van dyke yes we have a retarlison that's like a small upgrade over his ones to watch that was a free card and this one's 570k asenjo got a nice boost this is the best bruno fernandez card i've seen in fifa since the team of the year in fifa 21 or fifa 20 whatever it was this is a really nice card so i think that ea is dropping some decent content right now it's just not meeting everybody's expectations so you have a lot of people that are not super happy with it but I, I understand there's so many different viewpoints you can look at FIFA on. We say this all the time, you know, whether you like grinding objectives or SBCs or whatever it is, everybody plays FIFA at a different level. So we got to respect that, right? And, and take that into account, but also realize how EA won to run this game. So looking at this content from yesterday, again, I, I do feel like the team that is in PAX is solid, right? There's some cool cards in here, right? Cool cards. That's the way I'll, I'll phrase it is just cool content. Um, you know, a weak foot upgrade on the Rashford. Are these cards very expensive? Yes. The fact that Rashford is 1.2 million coins, but Hyunmin Son, who is either as good or arguably even a little bit better, just doesn't have five-star skills, has a five-star weak foot instead, which is maybe even more valuable in this game, uh, is only 700k, and that's actually up for him. Uh, compared to this Rashford being 1.2 mil. That's the big, big, biggest example that I look at right now and I say, okay, some of these cards are a bit overpriced. I think Sané is a bit too expensive. I think Danny Alves, with the links that he has being the World Cup links, uh, I think that makes him less linkable. You know, if you think about it, it kind of makes him like an icon with even worse links than an icon, almost, right? Because he just gets the Brazil links, unless you're running any World Cup players in your team, um, which of course those expire in January anyways. This card doesn't get that amazing of links, but it still gets Brazil links, so it's got some hype, and it looks like a pretty nice card. Um, so there's just hype there with some of the new cards that we got. I do expect to see these 
dropping off in price a little bit throughout the weekend because like i said yes ea is running lightning rounds in the store and yes people are opening packs but i think there's less demand for opening packs which means less supply if that kind of makes sense i know they're running lightning rounds like every hour these are untradeable lightning rounds right now there's a lot of packs that are in here uh the pack weight itself is actually not too bad right 8.4 percent from a 125k pack that's actually really good i believe um last week for the uh, Road to the World Cup cards out of a 125K pack, it was like three or 4% on uh, Black Friday. Now, I think there's better odds because there's let EA know there's less packs being opened since it's not a huge Black Friday pack spam. All the crazy stuff that was going on in the store last week. So that might be factored into it as well. But if you look at these cards in the market, they are pretty rare. I mean, I was trading with some Bruno Fernandes earlier in the day yesterday and he had literally like less than five to ten cards on the market at all times right now there's some overnight listings here but he's a really rare card only three pages there this rashford's a pretty rare card as well getting pretty cheap right now actually um in the low 1.2 million coin range for where he has been cheap is a relative term but again i think that the the cards and packs that were dropped yesterday was decent the objective for mr Weya was nice it's very easy if you're american you're gonna like this of course big game today very linkable card, pacey, decent super sub for a league on side at the very least. And then we did have the showdown SBC. We said it in yesterday's video. The, sh the SBC section would be where the most hype would be if EA were trying to create some hype content yesterday. They dropped Bergwijn and Ericsson. Honestly, uh, I think this Bergwijn card could be really, really good if the Dutch end up winning this game. Of course, I did Aronson, hoping for the U.S. to pull out the upset today. But imagine this card on a plus one or a plus... I mean, it would either be a, it would be a plus two or nothing, basically, because there's no draw in this scenario uh, because they upgrade these cards based off of who goes on, I believe. Who gets the win no matter if it's through 90 minutes or after 90 minutes uh but this card if a plus two were to happen to bergwine that'd be a really really good looking air divisi striker card or winger uh minus the weak foot of course and then if aronson of course if usa were to win that card would be looking very very nice as well but that's not insane content for like everybody right i completely get that now what is for everybody though is some of these path to glory upgrades and i do want to talk about this because ea did some decent upgrades in here a lot of the plus ones got released and they gave some decent um you know plus ones on all of these cards what it really looks like is plus one on every base stat and then they give two stats a plus two so Koulibaly got plus two passing and plus two dribbling not terrible for that one De Jong got plus two shooting and plus two defense making him go to 80 defense which is nice decent looking card there Papu Gomez got plus two shooting and plus two physical which is solid for this card um now one more upgrade for that Papu Gomez, and he's going to look really, really good. They maybe could give him 90 passing with the next upgrade. That could be a really nice-looking card. Brozovic got plus 2 physical and plus 2 pace, which was needed on his card for sure. Burgeis looks decent. Carvajal with the plus 2 shooting and passing on his upgrade. Uh, Grealish with plus 2 shooting and plus 2 physical. Milik got a nice upgrade. Paulinha... Uh, that was already upgraded. Pulisic got plus one pace, plus two shooting, and plus two passing. This was arguably the best upgrade of all the PTGs that was just dropped, right? For a card that is a left wing, right wing player, you know, getting two shooting and two passing is very, very nice. And then ones all the way around is nice for him. Kyle Walker with plus two passing, plus two dribbling, which is nice. Uh, Zakaria looks good as well. Plus two passing, plus two in the shooting department for him. So Ito out there with a, with a nice upgrade as well. Plus two shooting for him. Kuti Romero, plus two pace, but still not quite 80 pace. Needs one more win to get that 80 pace threshold. So a lot of these cards that did get upgraded, I think you've seen them rise slightly in price. Pulisic is up above 100,000 coins or right near it at the moment. Kim and Jay getting upgraded is 104K. De Jong is 600. Zakaria is 280. Grealish is up at 177. Kyle Walker's up a little bit too. Of course, Kuti Romero is at 226 and up big. So with these cards that got upgraded, like we saw earlier in the week, you might see a couple fluctuations. There might be a couple people that look to sell off these cards into today uh, just because they got the upgrade and, and people will say, all right, now is my time to sell. So just watch out for that. Uh, those ones that have a tough matchup uh, as we get into the round of 16 would be the ones that I would expect to see maybe dropping off a bit as people sell the card. But, you know, your Bruno Guimaraes, your Kuti Romero, those cards would probably not drop that much because they have really good matchups heading into this round of 16 for those respective nations. So just kind of watch out for those. But it is nice that we had those upgrades. We just wish we'd had the ones to watch upgrades 
as well. A little bit more about the content yesterday. I mean, you guys can see the loading screen, right? We barely have any icons out right now. If you compare it, I mean, it's, it's even really easy to see this on Footbin. I'll show you the squads here in a second, but these icons that we have out in packs right now, compared to the icons that were in team number one, like look how many icons we had last week. I know that they include um, the mini release cards in here too, the, the couple that were released in there, but I mean, we had a full squad plus one, and then right now for the icons that have been released yesterday, we literally only have six of the seven of them that are in packs right now. So that's a bit of a bummer in my opinion uh, from EA. I do believe there will be more of these icons released in the mini release, which EA did tell us we are going to get a mini release on Sunday. I don't know if we're going to get the double mini release like we had last week. Last week we had a Saturday and a Sunday. I would assume it would only be Sunday this week because we uh, it says here on the website it'll be Sunday, December 4th, which is also probably the time where we will see the Laporte card, right? Laporte was not dropped in packs today. Neither was Jaka. Those were two cards that we were expecting to see. So I would assume those would be a part of the mini release on Sunday. But I think we're a little underwhelmed by the World Cup icons that we had. Um, I mean, the upgrades to the, to the weak foot and uh, the skill moves on some of these cards, like Shevchenko is 4-4. 100,000 coins for the Shevchenko. Like, the icons are kind of the opposite of the promo cards, right? The foot stories, the World Cup stories cards look a little expensive. These cards look kind of cheap. I mean, at least some of them do. Shevchenko had 100,000 coins, like, for a 4-star, four 4-star, four high, high, 6-foot. I mean, yeah, center forward and right wing position changes. He's just like a, a cheap icon. You'd want to go out and try. So that one to me is a bit cheap. Uh, Luis Hernandez now being 4-4. I actually flipped one of these just like an hour ago. Um, I bought it at 279 and I sold it for 310 just because these cards are still decently rare. I thought that price was decent on his on his card. So it's very interesting. He's back to 280 again. It's crazy how these guys' prices fluctuate. You find a moment of rarity and you can make some coins. Um, but I just I think we're a little underwhelmed by this side of the content as well, just because of the lack of number, right? Um, Eto is one that if you're trying to trade on a really high budget and you want some risky flips, this Eto card is very rare. I saw one at 2 million coins a little bit ago. One went on bid, I think, for 2 million coins. He's right now at 2.2. He was selling at like 2.7, 2.8. So watch these World Cup Stories cards. That's what I'm looking to trade with tonight um, for a couple of the rare overnight flips. I think there will be opportunities to trade with these, but it's all about the timing, like I said, because... As these cards seem to be a little bit overpriced, you don't want to get stuck with any of them and then potentially be losing on them. And you're probably going to see some dropping prices today on these World Cup Stories cards just because, I, again, I do feel like they're a bit overvalued for where the rest of the market is. I did pick up some Essentials at like 260 266 256 on a bid here. I think I'll be able to get like 297 or high 290s. Uh, before everything is said and done, before his price maybe drops a bit today. And then Blanc at 370. I'm going to pick that up because... He's been bouncing between 370 and 400, and even a little bit above 400 too. And I think that's a French center back that people want to try out. So I'm going to snag that card and try that one out. I was thinking about flipping a Rashford because he's been over 1.3 mil literally all day. And right now he is like 125. That's really low for him. So kind of keeping an eye out there, but I'm going to keep it to the quick flips, probably heading into today on Saturday. And uh, just keep it easy with that stuff because I don't want to risk losing too many coins. Not that that will lose a ton, but... I just feel like some of the impacts promo cards will get supplied a bit more today and have potential to drop off. Um, I do also want to take a look at fodder. Yes, SBC fodder, because we had a lot of those SBCs that were in like making the fodder prices stay up. A lot of those ended up going away. 84s are back down to their nice, comfortable buying range of in the 2K range. I think these cards are a, a decent pickup. 85s are still 10K, but that's because of the hero upgrade. That's what's making those stay at a high price. 86s are getting back down there again. I think anything under 13 is good for a club stock on those. 87s I'd wait on. 88s I'd maybe wait on as well. Uh, 91s look good again to me at 50k. I mean, you look at these guys' graph over the past couple weeks. Yeah, a few weeks ago they were like 40,000 coins. I don't think they're going to get there unless EA don't drop any upgrade packs that are uh, at all requiring high rated cards in the next week so a club stock buy one put it in the club that's what we mean by club stock i think it's really good right now on the high tier fodder i like the the 91s a lot they're 50k and 90s are 45k so there's not a big enough price discrepancy there for me i think the 91s are a good club stock at the moment and same thing with the 84s and then we'll see what ea released throughout the rest of this week i mean we still have the hero upgrade pack that is out i think the hero expires on sunday if um, I'm remembering that correctly. 
So yes, yeah, this this expires on Sunday. So I would imagine that once we get to Monday again, we will see another sort of upgrade pack. Hopefully it's something regarding World Cup icons again, because that move, like that Max 89 World Cup icon SBC was crazy for the market. I would be uh, I would be very interested to see that drop on the game again. I think people would like to try that SBC out, and I think that SBC would have a lot of hype and a lot of demand around it. So I would say just be careful on the market again today, of course. PTG cards live in action once again. You've got Pulisic, you've got De Young, you've got these guys that are playing today. You've got you've got Romero, and you've got um, if any of you guys did uh, the center back from the MLS, uh, the generic is his name. His name I think um, Milos Dejanek is his name. The uh, Australian center back. They're playing of course today as well in the second knockout game. So keep a close close eye on those cards today. Not Dejanek. He's of course an SBC, but. Keep a close eye on the ones that are in packs like Pulisic. Now, yesterday was a crazy day because of the Switzerland-Serbia game. Uh, and I picked up two Zakarias at 270, sold one at 310, ended up selling one at 292. Picked up another one at 240, sold it at 279. So the, currently what I have is just some decent flips from yesterday. I ended up making some solid coins. I bought this at 640, sold it for 707. So not, not a really crazy day, but... We're going to try to trade this Blanc, try to trade some of these other World Cup Stories cards that we picked up and just try to get some quick flips and keep the coins rolling in um, while the content hopefully picks back up a little bit. There's another 371 there on Blanc. You can see a lot of 390s overnight, so might be not as much profit as I was hoping for as you can see a lot of traders here listing overnight. And that's why I'm a bit careful with these World Cup Stories cards as well. Like if I could show you Rashford again, um, this is the biggest thing I look for when I'm flipping cards overnight is... How high are the overnight listings? Rashford right now has so many cards expiring in the next four to five hours. 1.33, right? Uh, 1.31, 1.33. I don't think Rashford's going to go over 1.33. Maybe uh, later today, if, you know, you know, five, six, seven, eight hours from now, that could potentially happen. Uh, but, I mean, I'm going to be careful with that and try to stick to the, some of the lower budget stuff. Some of your golds might rise up today. So if you're watching this video, you're checking out like Gold Vinny. Um, was maybe some of the Brazil links and some of the hype there. I saw Gold Vinny was like what 46k or, or something along those lines. Uh, like he's, I think he's going up a little bit around 48k. You know, some of these cards might rise decently well on today. Cristiano Ronaldo gold card was down. Um, I think Ronaldo was like 97k to start the day yesterday, and now he's like 87. So that's a little bit low for him. Maybe he rises back up today. I'd watch that side of the market for a slight rise as people are playing weekend league and there is gameplay demand out there, but. It's a big day for World Cup games. It's a big day for the market, of course. I'm not entirely sure what content's going to drop today. The only thing that we might see today would be that Carlos Puyol icon uh, SBC. There's an icon moments or an icon World Cup icon, Carlos Puyol, that was leaked. That could potentially be today as a SBC here in the SBC section. So watch out for that. Um, as we have had Schweinsteiger and Van Persie, we might have a center back defender in Puyol coming out there soon today so not expecting a ton today which may mean some really good market fluctuation so keep an eye on that and hopefully ea release some swap tokens we didn't get any swap tokens yesterday i was a bit of a bummer maybe they'll drop that today but they dropped us some naughty or nice kits this is just some of the cool content fun content so anyways i'll stop talking have a good saturday enjoy the world cup games hopefully there's a lot of good movements in the market today and good luck with your foot champs games if you are playing it has been nate the foot accountant i will catch you guys later peace out